Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, homies. Welcome to this video. This will be a guide for the Fury in EQ2. For now, we're going to be playing on the TLE server, which is currently var soon. So that is what this updated video will be for. Potentially, we'll update it in the future. My name studies in game. Channel name's going to be Stopa. Let's get right into it. First things first. When dealing with healers, especially druids, I see so many people either not buffing properly or focusing too much on one particular thing or one particular part of the class and not pay attention not paying attention to the class as a whole. So first things first, we're going to go over buff priorities prioritization. We're going to be doing Primal Fury. Don't forget Primal Fury has basically all four stats across the board that will increase anybody's overall base damage for the spell. The only stat that it is missing that would benefit all the way across the board is stamina. Stamina might be a little overkill for it. Typically in a group, I like to put the Primal Fury buff on a Sorcerer if the Sorcerer is in group. If not, it'll either go to a Summoner. If the Summoner doesn't need it, then I'll put it on myself. The only reason I'll put it on myself is because I also focus on doing a lot of damage. However, if that is not really your playstyle, then you're going to want to prioritize this particular buff to one of your Sorcerers or your summoners if you don't have either one of those in the group and you're in a scout group the agility buff works well with a scout as well don't be afraid to throw it on it if your tank if your main tank fury it's a little strange to be there but if your main tank fury i used to be one throw the strength buff on the tank or yourself so that covers that one the next buff that we're going to cover is going to be lucidity lucidity is a very interesting buff unlike the warden where the warden gives stamina and wisdom which helps benefit you and the tank Lucidity doesn't benefit you at all except for the stamina increase. The stamina increase typically is not a big deal. However, for this expansion, we have AAs now that we can focus on here in EOF that grant a regenerative heal to Porcupine for this. I do have it spec, just not in my DPS set. The Porcupine heal is basically a percent heal of your max health, which is part of the reason why I have some max health gear on as well. So when I'm in raid, I'll be at a roughly 14 to 15,000. I don't have food on right now either. I have it turned off. So I'll be at about 15 to 16K in raid if I put this buff on me, which is the equivalent of, I believe, 1,600 for the heal, either 1,600 or 160. Don't feel like doing the math right now. But it's a, it's a nice raid-wide 24 man heal so it's nice to have max health nice to have stamina but if you're in the mage group or if you have mages in your group then it's always going to be better to focus this on them this stamina is going to help them survive those big aoe hits or those chances that they pull aggro and the intelligence is a huge 105 intelligence increase to the mage which will add significant damage to all of their spells including their pets if they're a summoner the next buff to focus on is going to be spirit of the bat Again, this can only be used within group, so if you're not in the main tank group, there's no need to focus on the base avoidance. If you have a scout in the group, say a bard for support, he'll benefit from the agility. It's really good to put this on your scouts. I prioritize this on my scouts overall. If you don't have a scout, then the next best person I would say is probably yourself because you get the in-combat power regen as well as a little bit of extra mana, which would give you enough to potentially get another heal off when you're in trouble. Now we're going to talk about temps. Well, let's do one more. We got a group AE buff. This is what makes Furies so strong is their group AE buffs. This is why they typically can be solo healers in a mage group and keep the squishies alive because their group buffs are the only one of the only in the game that applies physical mitigation, especially a large number like this without any gear, to everybody in the group as long as it's not a tank. If it was a tank and the tank was getting basically seven free pieces of gear, then we'd be in trouble. See, if you take a look at, I have leather gear on right now. I don't think I have any cloth, but basically cloth gear, you're sitting at around 100 mitigation for cloth gear, whereas the leather gear has a little bit more, but the cloth gear, you're basically seven pieces of gear with that 700 mid. I don't have any on me. So then we got forest spirit, which again is the intelligence increase. So 75 intelligence to all the mages in the group, which is huge. This one actually helps you out a little bit with the 75 to yourself as well. But this is the main reason why we are kept in the mage groups as solo healers. Because again, we get that mitigation across the board for everybody in the group to help with survivability. They get the buff with the intelligence on top of this buff. You're sitting at, you know, almost 200 intelligent increase just by having one fury in the group buffing you. So as far as static buffs, 
that's the best there is. That's the best it gets. And before I get to other temp buffs, we're going to go ahead and focus on some debuffs. Yes, they're important. They're extremely important in raid. These are just a couple of the ones that the Fury gets. Do not underestimate the decrease in skills. The decrease in slashing, disruption, ordination, ministration, all this kind of stuff really affects the actual mob as it's casting abilities. This works with scouts. This works with healers. This works with everybody that can cast the debuff. You always want to be prioritizing debuffs over everything else. Uh, more so if you are a shaman, especially a defiler, it will reduce the amount you have to heal significantly, which is why they're so good. So that's that one. This one is a little bit different. Most people focus on... Feast as being that 20% health reduction grants the heal. My opinion, the heal's not that great. I don't focus on the heal aspect of this debuff. That's not why I cast this. The reason why I cast this is because it gives the entire group, so your bard, your enchanter, your mage, and yourself, it gives everybody that stat increase of 35 primary, which is significant. It increases the health to the group by almost 70 stamina, which is, again, a significant health increase again that health increase will focus on your porcupine heal if you're spec for it you get avoidance you know it's it's do not underestimate the power of debuffs you know this is a you're basically a shaman with your percent or not a shaman an enchanter an illy with savant with the percent power reduction to your stuff more mitigation for the group do not underestimate the power of debuffs this is just one this is primarily a fury debuff but every single priest will be able to benefit some way or their group in some way from the debuffs that they get now when it comes to temp buffs everybody knows fey fire everybody loves fey fire fey fire is a group augmentation that grants the furies group additional heat damage with every successful attack for up to three attacks per ally the per ally is a very important part to read here make sure you're reading all of your abilities and understanding them in their entirety fey fire grants three attacks per ally which means all six members in the group because i'm specced for two extra triggers on fey fire all members in the group will get 2174 heat damage added on to a combat art or spell that they use five times so from control three control four control five control six and control seven all here on my hot bar every single one of those will get an additional 2174 heat damage per member in the group so six times five is 30 additional triggers. This is a huge buff that makes a huge difference in your overall group's DPS. This is something that you want to try to plan around your dispatches, your major debuffs on the mob. It's a temp buff when you're getting ready to go in for a fight. Sometimes I use it pre-fight just to kind of increase the DPS as a whole because so, most people prop temps beforehand. Once that's the case, I start waiting till I see the dispatch about to go off, off a of rotation, you know, min-maxing all the little things. That's taking things to a next level, but I just want you to understand that this is a per ally, three attacks buff to every single person in the group. The next one that we're going to focus on is Pack to the Cheetah. Yes, most people think that Pack to the Cheetah is strictly a combat movement speed increase. This is the biggest mistake if that is the only reason you're using it. To save yourself from having to waste your group cure or waste somebody else's cure to cure your tank if he's pulling. This is primarily for heroic content. Raid content, you're usually not worried about it, but it is going to become huge in raid when roots become a mechanic in the fight. So it dispels 96 levels of root on every single member in the group. So if everybody in my group gets hit with an AoE root, I cast Pack to the Cheetah, it cleanses it. We also get the increase of speed that everybody's used to. And then I still have my group cure for other progressions, other strategies, other fights that I may need to cure. For example, in EOF, you'll be fighting in Castle Mistmore. Vampires like to cast an elemental dot, which reduces casting speed, which is significant. They also do have roots. So being able to cleanse that root, get to my group, being able to cure that elemental to get casting speed taken off is a huge deal. Do not underestimate Pact of the Cheetah. Very important. Your most important spell, in my opinion, as far as utility goes for the Fury, is absolutely 100% going to be Porcupine. I just made this, or I just finished getting this character up, so mine's only Adept right now. I need to go ahead and start researching it. The Expert level is going to be... 2156 raid wide mitigation across the board. I mean, across the entire raid. All 24 members are going to get 2156 mitigation to every single stat 
that you possibly have. Meaning your elemental is going to go up, your noxious, arcane, your physical mitt's going to go up. Everything goes up, which in return is going to increase your raid survivability to a significant standard to a point where most people will run three to four furies in a raid just to constantly have it up. Um, again, the damage proc, not the best, but better than nothing. The main reason we love this spell and the utility for it is so good is that mitigation as well as when you spec for it, the regenerative heal. So that's that for buffs. That's that for explaining the basics of individual buffs, why your buffs work so well. Now we're going to get into the different styles of play and why there are three primary ways to play healers in general, but more specifically druids and more even more specific furies. I see a lot of people make the mistake of sitting here and just spamming your heals left and right on the tank or somebody that's low in the group. Don't get me wrong. You're a healer. Part of your job's to heal. But the way I love to look at healers is that, especially druids, is that healers are designed to prevent death, not heal. Meaning, as long as you're alive, I've done my job. The group can keep going. The group can keep pushing forward and progressing. If you're dead, then I failed. Now, this can take practice. This takes a little bit of time, a little bit of understanding of the game to get really good at. But the biggest waste of time or spells or class utility, in my opinion, is just sitting here spamming your heals. You get regions. You get bulk kills, single target heals. They're great. But if you're casting only them, you're missing out on those debuffs. You're missing out on the damage. I mean, just look at the look at the damage from these procs. This is significant damage before modifications alone that you're missing out on because you're just healing. You're essentially a wizard with heals as a fury. And if you buff properly and if you focus on rotations properly, you can do significant damage. So most people will stand here and they'll auto attack take a little bit of damage they'll cast a heal because they took damage and this is one way to play but in my opinion a significant loss of utility and purpose for the class you lose so much damage you lose so much time now granted my auto attack and weapons are proccing so there it's doing a lot more than most but most healers will have auto attacks on where basically they're moving two percent of the health it's a boring way to play in my opinion do it when you have to do it on progression but you're missing out on so much. Then there's the sketchy way, which is, some will say, the style of play that I enjoy, which is keeping people in the red or the orange just so I can DPS more. I love it, but just as a quick example to show you how potent it is when you buff proper, this is simply me casting quick spells, and look how fast that died. You know, that's a sketchy way to play when you're when you're doing nothing but hitting DPS buttons and one heal maybe. I prefer to play that way. Some don't the way that I recommend a lot play, especially your newer players, to start getting in the habit of playing a more hybrid style. A more hybrid style is going to be your pull a handful of mobs just so you can see. So you're going to get a couple mobs on you, enough to, to make me have to heal at least. We're going to go ahead and start doing this. See, I got a heal out. We're going to start doing a little bit of damage. This is what I would like to say is a hybrid style. I didn't pull enough mobs to actually hurt me in a heroic sense. You'd be casting heals every other spell. So a couple damage abilities, group heal for your group, back to DPS, another group or another single target heal on the tank, back to DPS, spread out your dots. You know, it's super, super simple. They're super simple ways to play. They take a lot of practice to getting used to. I recommend this one to a lot of the newer healers, you know, kind of stay within your parameters, but please just don't click only heals. You're wasting a lot of your class potential doing that. I really would like to see a couple of you guys pump out some more numbers. I think you'll enjoy the class as a whole a little bit more. I think your group mates will appreciate bringing you along because you're not just dragging a body to make sure somebody stays alive. Oops, sorry, somebody stays alive. You're able to contribute to the overall time to kill for the zone so you're not wasting as much time we're going to pull a handful more here kind of show you a little bit more of what i mean when you start playing this way it can get a little sketchy we'll kind of do it like this but if you've noticed it's a little bit harder i'm having to focus a little bit more on heals so using that utility in your class pull a little more just to to show you guys because this isn't enough all right maybe that's enough 
All right, so just to show you a little bit more of the utility, a lot of people will just sit here, they'll just hit heels, and they won't take any damage. They'll just spam their heels like this. All right, and there's nothing wrong with that when everybody else in the group is DPSing, but in my opinion, it's kind of a boring way to play. You're just sitting there, you're curing, you're focused on heals. Eventually, you're going to run out of power. The more fun way to play is to use your utility, okay? So we have a spell called Fae Fire is Furious. I'm going to drop it on the ground after I get this heal. I drop this Fae Fire on the ground. We're going to start DPSing. I'm going to pop Porcupine so that I don't have to worry about taking as much damage. And now I can focus on DPSing the entire group. And if you noticed, my health is not dropping all that much. This is also a good time to use Animal Form, which is an AA buff, which basically doubles my mitigation. It does not allow me to heal, though, so be careful with that. But this is a more fun way, in my opinion, to play, and it really helps the groups out. Focusing and reading your abilities, like back to the fray, under 50% health heals me for more. You know, there's lots of little idiosyncrasies within the game that help you as a whole. And then you can contribute more to your group by doing this. And now I'm going to focus a little bit more on DPS, because again, I got myself stable. Get that dot out there for our regen heal. Now I can focus on DPS again. And if you notice, my health's never green. But I'm not dying, so I'm able to constantly pump out damage, constantly help my group, throw out some debuffs. You know, I focus on debuffs more in heroic content and raid content, especially, because that's really when it matters most. When I'm just soloing, I don't worry about debuffs. They're almost a waste of time when you're soloing, unless you're on triple up heroic content and you really need that extra help. But in raid and heroic content, you absolutely want to use it, because again, those group-wide assistances really help. And as you can tell, pulled all those mobs, didn't die. Half mana, you know, had I just sat there and healed, eventually probably would have died, you know. And this is on a super basic level. This is not trying to overcomplicate things. So we're just going to do a quick summary. Read your buffs. Check out all your abilities. See if you got heals. See if you got percents. See if you got mitigations. See what your debuffs do. Kind of walk through them all. We can do a more in-depth guide later. I just wanted to put something out quick while my ADHD was kicking in to kind of show you guys a basic overview of how to play the Fury. We can do more in-depth stuff as we go along. This will be my raid main for the remainder of this expansion. I also love to play conjurers and wizards, sorcerers as a whole, but mainly wizards. So we'll get into all that later if that's what people want to see. But I just wanted to do a quick over guide for everybody else to kind of give a base understanding, at least of the Fury. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace out, my homies. Enjoy your evening. Hit the like. Subscribe if you want to be a part of the homie team doesn't really matter to me i'm just doing this to show people other ways and other styles to play classes there's not a lot of information out there for eq2 players so i'm gonna see what i can do for you all kind of give you a not a one-stop shop but like a reference guide say or so to speak so if somebody says hey what do you think of this or hey what of that instead of answering a million tells for a million people just send them to this video you know it's super simple so with that further ado i'll see you guys later see you next time in norath take care all